everybody for being here. Uh, this is just another special day for us at the University of Louisville. Um, we, we, I was able to share with you, I believe it was late August after the 50-yard line dinner, about our upcoming project that we were going to be working on, uh, the new stadium expansion to the, to the north end zone, and then the re redo of the Howard Schnellenberger complex that was so sorely needed. Yeah. Um, it's, all this is coming as good news because we're coming to fruition. We have a lot more details that we can share you with, share with you. And uh, after yesterday's signing party, we had a, a donor event in this room, and we're able to show this video that, that Mark and his staff have put together, and uh, kind of leads us down the road of we think this is, is significant progress for us. We think we're going to be able to move at a rapid pace. You know, obviously fundraising will dictate a lot of the timing part of it, but uh, we feel very confident there's a lot of momentum, positive momentum in this program, and, and the job that Bobby's done in the two years he's been here, and 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 where we feel we're headed, we think it's the right move, and excited to move it on. So. Uh, Saying that, uh, I've kind of put this all on Mark's shoulders. Uh, him, him and his group have, have really, really dove into this for the last four or five months to make sure that this was going to be a reality. And so I applaud all of them. A lot of them are in this room and, and the great hard work that they've done and the dedication that they've showed to this project. But I think this will be a real crown jewel. To, to our football stadium. And uh, you couple this with the new academic center that's going in there and there. I think the, all these additions are just very, very positive, not only for our university, but for our athletic department, for the community along. So Mark, you can take it over and you can answer all the questions, do whatever you want. Great, thank you. Um, appreciate you guys being here today. Um, you know, one of the things I think really kind of before I get started, um, we're really excited. We put together a nice video. Many of you guys have seen the images. I think we put those out there in early or late August. Um, we worked with the company to help put together a 3D fly-through video that um, kind of helped put it together, kind of put in perspective for you guys on, on kind of the magnitude of the project. And then certainly when it's over, I can answer some more specifics on um, on the campaign. So if we can cue the video, we can go ahead and get that played for you all.
Go ahead, go ahead. I wanted to show you guys that first, uh, you know, really kind of before we get into the details, just because it's something that, as you can see, it really helps put in perspective on, on the size and the magnitude of the project that we're going to take on. Um, this is something, as my dad mentioned, we've worked very hard on. Um, we spent, you know, the last 18 months working with um, Johnson Consulting and, and doing a feasibility study to make sure that this is something we can do. You know, obviously, um, you don't want to build something just to build it. Um, you know, we've got the demand, which is great, you know, a fan support. Uh, to be there to do something like this. I think it's very unique to have an opportunity to do an expansion twice in a decade. I, you know, I, don't, I can't imagine too many other um, places are doing something like that, and it speaks volumes to the support that we have from our community and from our fans. The campaign for us is, is really twofold. It's one, it's, it's about enhancing the fan experience. We spent a lot of time looking and digging into, okay, here, making sure that with an expansion that we, we create, you know, some very great opportunities for seating for our fans. You know, looking at it, you saw we've got 12 field level suites. We've got 70 premium boxes. The premium boxes, to put in perspective, are very similar to what we have at the Yum Center. The exact same thing down there. Um, we had great fan um, reaction from, from, from individuals that own those boxes. And then we, we're going to add nearly 1,000 club seats. All in total, we're going to have over 10,000 seats that will put our seating capacity to 65,000. Uh, one thing that we really want wanted to do that was really important to us was making sure that this was going to be this end zone expansion was going to be accessible to all fans that it's going to you know putting us like I said at 65,000 everyone's going to have an opportunity to be there um, you know I think you look at uh, the crunch zone right now how many of our fans have you know I'd, I'd say probably 80 percent of people that originally purchased tickets there in 1998 still own those tickets and so we're wanting to kind of duplicate that and kind of having a crunch zone 2.0 in that end zone you know really creating a dynamic environment for our fans um, the second aspect that we, we wanted to do was enhancing the student athlete experience. Um, structurally, we haven't touched the Schnellenberger complex since it opened in 1998. Um, you know, the, the, the game and the focus on student athletes has dramatically changed and shifted um, culturally over the last 20 years. Uh, a couple of the key elements that we're going to do, we're going to add nearly 40,000 square feet to the facility and renovate nearly 30,000 square feet. So all in total, we're going to have 70,000 square feet worth of new and addition, uh, new and renovated space to provide our student athletes with everything they need from, um, you know, expanding the weight room um, by nearly 10,000 square feet, adding a hydrotherapy from a training and, and a, um, a medical purpose and then certainly, um, you know, a couple things that Coach Petrino really wanted to have, um, adding a team room. You know, that was something that was very important to him uh, as, our, as our roster size has grown and certainly as our staffs have grown, being able to have an area where our guys can focus and, you know, watch film, study, break down. Um, as, as you guys all know, Coach Petrino is such a uh, student of the game to be able to have that asset for him. Um, you know, one of the key elements that we're going to add as well is um, – creating a, a student lounge, you know, a student athlete lounge where they can go and decompress, kind of get away from football for a minute. They, they spend a, a lot of time at the complex and it was very important for Coach Petrino that we had an area for our students to be able just to go and take a breather. If you have some time off, to go and rest. Um, I think, you know, for us, it's, it's a great project. We've worked really hard. My, my staff and, and our team have done, um, have been out in the community and really talking to a lot of uh, um, leaders in the community and getting a pulse and seeing if this is something, again, that, that is going to work for us. You know, we did the feasibility study, which said, yes, this is something we can do. But more importantly, it was getting out in the community and asking and talking with our donors and our supporters to see if this is something we can do. And last night, we hosted a, a, a small event to really kick off the campaign. And uh, as you can imagine, the support was overwhelming. So this is something that we're, we're excited to start. And um, as my dad mentioned, today is really kind of the, the, the kickoff to, um, to our campaign. Okay, with that, I guess I'll answer any questions you guys may have. I know you said the timing was about uh, the funding would kind of reveal the timeline, but do you have a goal in mind of when you want to get this up and running? You know, certainly we want to be as aggressive as possible and get it started as soon as we can. Um, certainly knowing how um, important of a project it's going to be for our, our program, we want to get it done as soon as we can, but it all be dictated based off our fundraising efforts. Mark, uh, awesome video, by the way. Um, Thank you. I I'm wondering, is there any concern from you knowing that college football attendance is trending downwards right now when adding 10,000 seats? 
It's, cer it's certainly something that we, we discussed, but, but again, you know, being out in the community and having a pulse on it and hearing from them, seeing the kind of demand that we have from a wait list, from a season ticket perspective, um, you know, I, I, I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't, uh, you know, we didn't think about it, but, you know, our current demands and everything else, you know, support us moving forward with this facility. Oh, I'm sorry. Have you have you sold some you know club seats or some of these field level suites? Has they already you know had some some commitments from from people to buy those? We haven't sold any seats. We that was something we wanted to do last night. Was kind of the, the first initial kickoff. Um, you know I think that since late August, our my staff, our development team has just been on the community sharing the project talking about it and, and getting people excited so um, we're going to start um, today um, today's kind of our this was really our our internal um, start date as well um, for those and so what we're going to do is we're going to approach all cardinal athletic fund members um, we're going to give them priority first um, and in addition to just what you saw with the seats like i said the other major component of the campaign is you know the renovations and the addition to the Schnellenberger complex and so it's, it was very important that we get to get a chance to be able to share that story individually with each of our um, um, each of our um, uh, donors and fans have you set are there set prices on the things already or is it sort of just kind of what people may offer or has the has it no it's it's still we're still we're still identifying um, the correct price points um, it, it's a work in progress but you know I think uh, as I mentioned earlier it's one thing that we certainly wanted to um, do is make it accessible to all fans um, you know from from every area uh, within the facility Steve the pricing will be very consistent to what we've done around the, the entire building Tom can you talk about what this means for you to see it come full circle Oh, I just think it's a, another great addition for the for the project. And I think it was a very good question that Spence asked about, uh, you know, adding 10,000 seats. We would not do this project if we didn't feel it was uh, it was feasible or it didn't make a lot of sense for us. And and we really looked at that. There, there's going to be a lot of amenities in an end zone project. Most times you see an end zone, it's bowling it in and just having bench seats. This is going to have everything. It's going to have every bell and whistle. And basically, I, as I said in August, these ideas didn't just come from from me or, or Mark. I stole these from Dallas Cowboy Stadium and Seattle. That's where this whole thing is coming from. So it's going to have those type of amenities. Uh, I think one thing that we really should highlight is I think as much as everybody loves this club and the Brown and Williamson Club, that club over there is going to be simply outstanding because of not only the size of it, but the view of downtown is going to be phenomenal and how it overlooks the entire campus so the community will be able to use it. But to answer your question, Jody, I just think it showed the, the, how aggressive this program has been. Uh, I think our coaching staffs, whether it was from John L. all the way through to, through to Bobby, uh, we've really grown and I think you know Howard came in here with a great vision and I think we've been able to build on it and we want to continue to do it and I feel very very com confident and comfortable that we're going in the right direction uh, to your point how many different designs did you have or was this it from the beginning or no we had a, kinda... we had a lot Tony we had a lot of Mark uh, he worked with the architects nonstop on this thing and you probably had seven or eight at least didn't at you least, yeah then at who least. Just said, like was there a committee or you guys just said that's the best one well we have a we have a real good architect that, that, that really has done so much of this entire complex. And, and so we really rely on him a lot. And he's a very creative guy. He's done a lot of NFL stadiums around the country and, and a lot of big, big projects. But he kind of helped us settle on this one. And uh, moving to the ACC, you think uh, that obviously had a lot to do with this and the new schedule and the new guys coming in town helped push this along the way? Um, if we were in the American, I don't think we would be looking at that right now. I think we'd be putting this on hold, but I think the ACC has been an incredible uh, shot in the arm for this entire community for us, and it's, it's certainly exceeded all of our expectations. It really has. It's helped us, and it's a great thing about the ACC, too, is it's really fueled our fan base, and, and, that's, and I think that was something that, that I'll always look back and be most grateful for. It's been a great home for all of our sports, a great home for the university itself, but I think it's been awesome for our fan base. Mark, you, you stressed the importance of uh, making it accessible to everybody in the stadium. Aside from the suite, you know, owners and, and those people, what are, what's something that the average fan will recognize or, or notice with new amenities? What's something the everyday fan will see when they walk in to the stadium and first see this project? I think you're... Uh, 
the biggest thing that you'll notice, especially, is we're going to build a terrace that will connect the east to the west side, just like we have over here, the Norton Terrace. And we've had such a great response from that area. I mean, you see it on a game basis. I mean, it's jam-packed. And so we wanted to be able to duplicate that and creating a, a gathering area for all our fans. Great viewing angles, and also just to be able to go and, and watch a game and have fun. So that would be, probably be the biggest thing that you would notice. Mark, I noticed in some of the, uh, the drawings you have back here, it mentions a parking garage. Uh, can you explain where that is in the project? And was that something that was added since August? Because I don't, and maybe it was there, I just don't remember, but I don't remember seeing that in the original uh, conceptuals. It's always been a part of the project. It's something that we, we asked in the way that we were able to design the facility. Certainly parking is always at a premium. Um, so we added the architect to be able to, to create um, a few spaces within that facility for us to have. Mark or Tom, either one, just kind of, again, about the attendance. I mean, a couple games this year that didn't get 50,000 people, or there, was there a game? I mean, what did you think when you saw a game like that and knew that you're trying to add to a 65,000 seat stadium? Well, I think you're always going to have those ebb and flows. Um, the thing that we're looking at is we want to make sure that we're prepared for when the big games are here and the games that are extremely important to our fan base because we know that they're always going to come out and want to be a part of it. Um, we, you know, in recruiting, it's, it's certainly it's an arms race. We know that, and we're, we can't hide from that. But we wanted to make sure that we were very smart in the way we did it. You know, though I did not want to go backwards. You know, I want to go forward, and I want to be progressive, and I think that'll, that, that helps us a lot. I think in our new conference, though, I think we're going to have so many great opportunities to fill this stadium that it's going to, be, it's going to pay many, many, many dividends. Mark, you're finishing up on the other end of the stadium. Can you just update that for a second? Is the academic center on track? It, it is on track. Um, just uh, we got a note today saying that it's on track and it should be ready for, um, for occupancy on July 15th. So it's moving along, and it's something that again we can't be more excited. Couldn't be more excited about. And Tom, you can't do this without a good product on the field. Can you just talk about what Bobby has done and maybe the future for him? And, and you know different I mean any chance to rework his contract or is that in the is that even in the thing right now well I think you know first thing about Bobby you know we like to like Mark said this is project 2.0 or whatever the end zone 2.0 this is Bobby 2.0 and I think all of you have had a been had a chance to experience that up front and close with him and he's a he's done a terrific job and I think everything that that I could ever dreamed of him doing here he's doing he's done everything the right way He's been very engaging, not only to the community, but to the media. I think his recruiting's done fantastic for us. He, he gets the type of kids he wants, uh, he, and he's doing it on the field. And I, I, I couldn't be more appreciative. As I said to the group last night, one of my highlight moments ever of Bobby Petrino was this year. You know, that, that exceeds all the Orange Bowls and the great wins and the, even, the, even the loss at Miami when they were number one in the country. I, the thing that I was so impressed with him this year about was when we were 0-3. Because that's where I like to judge people. And I like to characterize people and see just how they're going to react when things are down, when chips are down. And you all know that that season could have turned the, the other way. And for him to finish up winning eight out of the last ten games, really had a lot of question marks on a very young team. Uh, we, we were probably, uh, Rocco would know better, but I think we were probably one of the youngest teams in the country. Uh, and for him to, to finish the way he did and to be able to go in and, and do what he did in the Music City Bowl, against a team that was, was loaded with five-star talent, you know, was loaded. Uh, I, I thought we dominated that game. I thought the score wasn't indicative of the finish. But I just, I like the momentum that we've got going. I like the type of staff he's, a, he's accruing. I like the type of kids he's getting. I like how the community is behind him. I love how, so much how the ex-players are behind him. That really plays into to my, uh, my philosophy is, are you doing the right things if the ex-players like you? Because they're the most critical that we have. They're much more critical than the fan base is, and, and they just love having him back here. As far as his contract, Jody, uh, I am. That's something I'm going to do right away. I want to extend his contract. I told him that uh, a couple days ago. I think he's earned that. Um, <clears throat> this is the Bobby 2.0 that wants to be here, and that's what I've always wanted. I want coaches that want to be here, and he wants to be here. He, him and his family and his kids and grandkids and everybody are all settled in. And that's what I like. I think every decision that I see in Bobby 2.0, every decision he's making is for the long term. And I think that's, that's a great, great asset to have in anything you do, whether in life, business, anything you want to do. And, I, and I, he's earned it, and I, I want to keep him here for as long as he'll stay. 
Tom, what was the donor reaction to expanding the stadium and what kind of feedback have you gotten from them? Well, we locked the doors so they couldn't get out last night. <laughs> but uh, it was, it's all been very, very positive. And uh, people, uh, Mark was a little bit modest in talking about sales to Steve, but there's a lot of commitment. So there have already been pledges and things. Uh, we will not, we haven't taken any money yet for seats because we wanted today to be the official kickoff. Like I said, when we met, we saw you in August, we just had renderings on this. Now we've got a lot more meat in the deal and we know we're going forward with it and it's going to happen. And, but uh, I think it's, it's been over, in my opinion, much more than I thought, much more positive than I thought. And, and I Mark, thought it would be positive, but it, this has been great. And Mark, what happens to the Johnny Unitas statue out there? Well, that's something that we've really deliberated on a lot, um, you know, and I think what we'd like to do is we'd like to, to, you know, kind of put it out to the fans and hear their suggestions on, on what they'd like to do. This is for them. The statue's for them and to be able to celebrate. I think, you know, I, I love where it is now. It's great. You know, the team is able to, um, you know, to kind of just kind of like with Howard's Rock at Clemson are able to touch it as they go out and become part of our tradition. But, you know, the one thing that's been tough for us is our fans haven't been able to access it. And so that's something that we certainly want to do is have our fans be able to take pictures and, and really have an opportunity to, to, to see it on a daily basis. So, you know, I, I, we are certainly open for suggestions on, on where to put it. You know, I've had a couple great uh, uh, recommendations already from some fans and certainly are open for more. But we, we do want to make it very public and open to, the, to, the, to our fans. In addition to that, the, probably one of the single most complaints we got about this entire stadium was that was that statue being inside and they couldn't get to it. So we would like to really put it somewhere it's going to be accessible to everybody because everybody wants to pose with it for pictures and things like that. So that'll be a huge part of our decision and your decision. You guys will be as involved as we are. Tom, time after time, you guys have exceeded expectations with every project that you've done. For $55 million, this this looks phenomenal. I'm wondering, how are you able to stretch a dollar as well as you guys do? Was that sort of a challenge with this one? It, it is, but we uh, we wanted to do it right because we, we believe in the wow factor and we believe in selling the wow factor because I think, you know, not only from a recruiting standpoint, but I think from our community pride standpoint, people want to see something that's special. Like I said, the easiest thing we could have done, Spence, is just close in the, with a bowl and just have bleacher seats in there and just like every other stadium you see. But the, the character of this stadium and the name brand of this stadium, Papa John's, the people around this nation know, first of all, Papa John's, that resonates with them. Second of all, they know it's all chairbacks. So we wanted to make sure that was incorporated. We want to make sure the red seats were incorporated. We want to make sure that we did something much different than just a normal end zone project. That's why you'll see the players coming through a lounge when they're coming out, uh, sim pretty much like they do in Dallas, coming through that bar setup. Now this ours might be have something to do with pizza, I hope, but uh, you know they're, they're going to go through something like that, and it, it's going to be fun. So that's why we really focused in on putting so many amenities in, but we're also very cost efficient. And that's the one thing that we've always said to architects. Every, I think every one of our projects that we've done, we've always looked at the numbers and make sure that we're able to, to do it, but make sure it makes sense. Tom, you uh, keep on getting guys like Elvis, joining Johnny down for Cards Walk or something like that. Could be You keep putting 10 guys in the NFL draft every year. That'll help too. With that in mind, I noticed this, I thought it looked like Seattle Stadium. Does that have any kind of sound effect? And the second thing I want, you guys are already ahead of the curve of most of the ACC members, I think, in stadium. This just progresses that, I think. When a kid comes here from Georgia or Florida, Virginia or something, and sees that, they got to be amazed. This is Louisville. They, they probably had no idea what you guys have done here. You hear that on and on all the time. And, uh, you know, and you've seen all those stadiums. And a lot of them are just big stadiums with bleacher seats. I think we all got a taste of that when we went to Notre Dame. When, you, when we got a chance to see that. Yeah, that's the most famous stadium, arguably, in the, in, in the country, but it, it couldn't hold a candle to this place. And I think the amenities that our fans have and that our, when our players come and see that wow factor, it's really special to them. And that's why. That is from the Seattle Stadium. And, and it makes a lot of sense. I don't know about the, the sound, Tony. I don't know about that piece. But it's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Thomas, I guess, just specifically, uh, I mean, in general, I mean, what would you say is the, the goal for when it could really, I mean, I know you said it's all dependent on fundraising, both of you guys, but I mean, is there a certain Well, it's thing? probably going to be at least two years in building it. So, and then we're going to have to dodge seasons, you know, so there's going to be a timing factor in it. But, you know, I think if we could have this open in the 18 or 19 season, I think it'd be a, that would be a good, good goal to have. 
and I know the 19 season makes a lot of sense for us. I'd like it to be quicker, but I would like it done yesterday too. And I know it's just not going to be a reality, but the 19 season, we open that Labor Day Monday night, just like we did with Miami a couple of years ago. That's going to be the Notre Dame game. So I think we would be able to fill those seats. Uh, is there any public money at all at, the, at this point? Playing they, they haven't shown us any yet. I know In fact, all the projects that we've done, I've never seen any, so I, I would anticipate that we probably won't see any. Uh, Mark, you talked, and for Tom also, you talked about the building, and or for the fans, but talk about the building, and like you said, you haven't done anything to that structurally since it opened, and how important that will be for recruiting and for like kind of the ACC arms race there, and then also what happens when you're building that with the program, and will they have to be somewhere else for you know the time that you're building it you know talking with coach Petrino was you know we sat down and asked him okay what, what's your wish list? what do you want if, if we're going to do this expansion certainly we want to make sure and do it right what were what were some some items that were um, important to him and first thing you know he said he wanted to have you know an expanded weight room uh, which you know we've, we've more than doubled secondly he said he wanted to have a bigger team room and you know so we're gonna build a new team room we're gonna have um, adjacent offices there um, for offense to be able to use we're gonna re repurpose the old team meeting room make that specifically for defense take the current individual office or excuse me the current individual meeting rooms enlarge and make them bigger and specifically for defense and then third was really again going back kind of to the student welfare was he wanted to have the players lounge he said that's he said to me that's that's as important of anything that we do i want to have that there for them and certainly as as we go through and and you know like i said if you're we're adding 40,000 square feet and renovating 30,000 there will be um you know a, i won't say a little bit of growing pains but that's something that um is going to happen he understands it exactly you know we don't have you know logistically have it worked out yet but they know what we'll have to kind of be patient with them for for a couple for a couple months does that, does that start first or is there a plan like yet on how you i mean will the stadium you said you'll have to dodge the seasons but will that building be first or do you think this the stadium will be first or is there a plan yet we don't tell we, we don't have a plan uh, just yet you know everything that we've talked about um, has been doing it concurrently doing it all together um, which I, I think makes probably the most sense um, you know the key for us right now certainly is the fundraising you know once we're able to get to, once we're able to raise the necessary funds we'll put the project out for bid and then we'll have um, you know have some of the um, uh, construction companies put together a timeline and a time frame for us to uh, to review and they'll pretty much dictate that to us Jody uh, <clears throat> Tom, you brought up the subject of the red seats, uh, and I know that was included in the long range uh, wish list. Uh, what's uh, what's the plan on replacing the uh, the current seats, or getting rid of the pink seats? Is what I'm getting at. Pink seats are very popular, so we've had a lot of people inquire about those. So, no, we have, we don't have any plans to to replace those right now, uh, that would be, a, I think, an unnecessary expense at this time. I'd rather put that money into the new building right now. And if all we have to do is fill the seats and nobody will know that they're pink. Mark, Mark, those those video boards that we see right there, exactly how big are those? And is it comparable, are they comparable right now to any stadium that our fan, uh, that your fans might notice? We asked, uh, we asked uh, the, the architect, um, Basically, what you'd see there is the current size that we have right now, having two of those. Uh, having the, does that make sense, to having two of the... How big are they going to be in relation to... Well, to look at this one, just put yeah. two of those. Oh. The one out in the end zone. That one, it's have two one on each side. And they'll be both on yeah. that size. You know, one thing that, I, that, that you know, we're talking about momentum and going into the project. Um, one thing I'm excited to share with you all is we have secured a few um, large gifts. Um, Planet Fitness and uh, Rick and David Keeper gave a $3 million gift uh, to help us get started. And then um, this week we were able to um, to finalize the deal to name the, uh, the, the club over um, the expanded club. And it's going to be the Pepsi. So Pepsi gave a $5 million gift to, to name the club. So we've um, we've got some great momentum, um, and certainly our team is going to continue to push. Um, you know, we, we want to be aggressive. We want to get it done. So um, to have those two uh, those two gifts is a great start for us, and we've been very, uh, very appreciative of their continued support. They've been with us for a long time. 